come now as you are as you wanna be are you ready are you ready and come now tired broken scared or just in me are you ready Just come. Are you ready? Are you ready? Come now. Bring your hopes, your dreams, your doubts, your scars. Are you ready? Are you ready? so excited to get to say this, but welcome to Launch Sunday here at Nouveau Church. Oh man, man, we 
are so grateful. Go ahead and have a seat real quick. Man, we are so thankful that you guys are here with us today. Uh, for a few people in this room, actually, today has been over 10 years in the making. Uh, and so I hope that you guys get to enjoy today, soak every moment in. Uh, but for most of the rest of us, myself included, uh, we've really been engaging in Nuvo over the past year or so. And uh, I think back all the way to how Nuvo started after Patrick and Ryan and their families moved here to Columbus. It actually started during the pandemic on Zoom. Everyone was doing the, the Zoom thing. And uh, so we had some groups that were there on Zoom. And I, actually, I'd be curious to see a raise of hands or maybe hear you this morning. How many of you guys came during the Zoom days? Any, anyone here come during the Zoom day? Like three people? Yeah. Okay, yeah, a couple of people, that's awesome. Uh, there weren't very many. In fact, we had a few couples that hopped on multiple devices, so that way the room would feel a little bit bigger. Uh, but that's, what, that's when I came, that's when our family came, and it was cool seeing everyone's digital backgrounds. But uh, thankfully, uh, the uh, uh, Ohio allowed us to meet in person, things opened up, and we began uh, to meet at Cohatch Polaris. How many of you guys came during the Cohatch Polaris days? Anyone? Yeah, a few more, okay. All right, uh, I really appreciated that we didn't get completely catfished, but that like some people were real. So uh, thank you for real people showing up. And we there exploded through the capacity of that facility, which was like 20 people. Uh, so it, it was cool that we exploded through that venue and uh, had to find somewhere else, uh, which was, I think if I remember right, I, I read this somewhere, it was literally every hotel around the 270 belt, belt loop that we met in. Uh, how many of you guys came during the hotel days? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, a lot of hands there. That's awesome. Uh, I'll never forget uh, the first time we met in the hotel is when we actually sat, set all this stuff up, all the lights and the screen, and uh, there was a giant ice storm. <laughs> we were all like sliding around the parking lot trying to load things in. I'm like, what in the world did we get ourselves into? But uh, that was awesome. Those were the good old days. Uh, and then maybe about a month and a half ago, we actually started doing preview services right here at the Exchange, a place that we've been praying for, hoping that we'd be in for the launch of the church. How many of you guys came over the past couple months in the preview days? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, man, you guys only know the good times. <laughs> this place is pretty cool, is it not? Um, but yeah, so and then uh, all leading to today, I know some of you in this room are here for the very first time. Maybe you're here from out of town. We got a few out of town folks. Uh, maybe you're here because a family member or a friend, coworker, neighbor invited you, aka dragged you here at the church today. Uh, some of you might be here because you saw that Facebook selfie video of Patrick so many times that you started seeing him in your dreams, and then you just started to show up and said, hey, is this real life or not? Just me? Anyone, anyone else <laughs> see that video like a million times? But how many of you guys here, if you'd be uh, so bold to say, hey, I'm here for the first time today. Anyone here in the room today? Yeah, thank you guys so much. Let's greet our guests this morning. Man, thank you so much for being here, regardless of how long you've been engaging here with Nuvo. Our hope is this for you today. Our hope is that you get to experience the type of church that we've been dreaming about creating. A church that regardless of your path, past faith background or lack thereof, regardless of any questions, doubts, skepticism that you might have toward faith, God, this whole thing, uh, regardless of whatever your past is, you can come here and you can explore and integrate faith with other people that are going on the same journey as you do. So uh, that's our hope for you today. We believe that this is going to be something special. It already is, and you're here on day one. So thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, to let you know what to expect in the rest of the service, we're going to sing a few more songs with uh, Susanna and Justice and Fatima and the band. Uh, and then we're going to hear a talk from our lead pastor, Patrick Holden. Uh, and then afterward, we would love if you would just hang out for a little bit, get to meet a few other people as well. So again, thank you so much for being here today. And what I'd love to do right now, actually, is would you stand to your feet and maybe get to meet a couple people around you, say hello, get to know their name, ask them how long or when they came to Nuvo, and then we're going to jump back into some music.
victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me.
pray for us real quick. Um, Father, we thank you that um, there's a portion of this room who really believes that fully, and uh, we get to sing that, and there's something inside of us that just kind of feels like it comes alive as we say those words, and then there's other of us in the room who we might sing that out as a prayer, kind of hoping and wishing and kind of full clenched fists, believing that maybe just maybe you might be a way maker in a situation in our lives. And some of us are here, and we don't know what we think about it. So, Father, today I ask that over this little bit of time that we have together, um, that you would open our hearts, that you would speak to us, and we would come to these moments with the fullness of our questions and doubts and fullness of our own humanity, fullness of our own wonderings, and that you would meet us with the fullness of your presence here. And we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for singing with us. You can go ahead and have a seat. Hey, one more time for this band. Didn't they do a phenomenal job? So good. <clears throat> So good. Hey, we're so glad you're here. Uh, my name is Patrick. Uh, I'm the lead pastor here, and uh, thanks for coming to our grand opening. We're pretty excited about that, uh, especially those of you who were on the Zoom call in the earlier days. I, I, I missed that part. How many of you, real quick, were here like from the very beginning on Zoom? I think there's probably like, <laughs> they're all in the back, and they all have their hands up, and they're all a little bit embarrassed that I'm calling them out. That's great. Um, it's pretty great uh, when, you, when you try to start a church in the middle of COVID um, and you don't know anybody and you're an introvert like I am, um, Facebook uh, cold calling seems like the best option. And so that's kind of how we got started. And, uh, but you're here uh, really about 18 months after that. And we're so glad you decided to join us today. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be kicking things off. I'll tell you this. Uh, we wanted to kind of give you a little bit more information about our church. And so if you would, if you have your cell phone, we love for you to use your cell phone, especially during the message. I don't care if you're distracted or not. Pull out your cell phone. Uh, so I'd love for you to do this. Go ahead and pull out your phone if you would. Uh, we're going to give you some next steps. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about our church or figuring out more about who we are and what's going on, uh, we'd love to stay in contact with you. All you got to do uh, is just text NUVO to 94,000. Did I say that right? 94,000? Yeah. I used to say 9,400 and nobody signed up for anything. It was great. Uh, yeah, 94,000, we'd love for you to do that. Or also, if you're on a seat, especially in these section, uh, I think we have a connect card uh, on your seat. I'd love if you would to take that out. Uh, you can fill that out digitally or you can do it uh, right there with your card. If you're in the back, uh, there's so many of you. We didn't have enough cards, so I'm really glad that you're here. Uh, but uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and uh, fill this out digitally. I'd love for you to do that as well. Again, you can text that uh, NUVO to 94000 to get all the information. Now, one of the things that we're doing is we've been building a launch team for quite a while. In fact, it's about 83 people um, who are part of the, of the launch team. And I'll tell you this. I want to give one big shout-out. Where's Jesse Witt at? Where's Jesse Witt? Jesse Witt, ever say, hey, Jesse. Yeah, we're going to get to know each other real quick, I promise. So Jesse got up this morning. At what time did you get up this morning? 345, which is a requirement for all launch team members. Uh, just kidding. No, Jesse got up at 345, and he uh, brought these trailers over, which I love. And so there's a team that got here early set up, um, and people were making this day happen, which is an incredible thing. Uh, but you see volunteers here all over the place. We have kids ministry. We have all the production stuff. But we would love for you to lock arms with us. If you're interested in being a part of our church or you're interested in getting involved, we'd love to, to invite you to do that. Uh, and then the other thing, and this is a lot uh, for the launch team members, a lot of you have, have locked arms with us in a lot of different ways. So launch team members, they, they sort of kind of lock arms with giving. They lock arms with serving and then inviting other people. In fact, a lot of you are probably here, not just because you saw my awkward selfie video, which was the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever created, uh, but also because uh, somebody might have invited you. And so we're so grateful that they did, and we're so grateful um, that you're a part uh, of today as well. Now, with all that said, uh, we believe uh, that it's really great for you to come to a service, and we like that you're in rows, because that's always fun, especially when we sing. Uh, but we think it's probably better if you connect with other people around you. Now, real quick, let me just do this. Where are my introverts at? Do I have any introverts in the room? Where are my introverts? Go ahead and read. I love they're always like, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. So if you're a little bit nervous about what's about to happen, I am too. So I'm an introvert too. I get it. Now, where are my extroverts at? Those hands pop up real quick. They're loud. They're, they, they've already had four cups of coffee. Their spouse is embarrassed. It's great. So, um, so here's what we're going to do. Right? I want you to meet a couple of people around you, but all the introverts in the room, I'm going to help you out. I got you. So we're going we're gonna to do a, a question that I just want you to circle up with a, a couple of people around you, and I want you to ask them this question. The question is this. What is the most embarrassing song that you enjoy listening to when no one else is around, right? So real quick, where are my Spice Girls wannabe fans at? Do we have any of those people? Uh-huh. What about chasing waterfalls, people? Anybody? Where are all my Backstreet Boys? Judgment on all of you. Judgment. 
Because my instinct people know where it's at. Am I right? No, you just like Justin Timberlake. You know, you calm down. Anyway, so, so here's what we're going to do. I'd love for you to spend a little bit of time talking to people around you. Ask them, like, what's this most embarrassing song? And, and for us to just experience this moment together, I thought it would be fun for us to listen to an embarrassing song that we all love to jam out to. So let's go ahead and play this. It's going to be in the background where you have your conversation. Circle up around you. You just got Rick rolled. Let's talk together, everybody. All right. Confession time is almost over in church. Go ahead. All right, so I want to hear some of these. So I'm going to need you to go ahead and take a big deep breath because we're going to need you to shout it out pretty loud. Um, but I want to hear some of your embarrassing songs. Don't worry. We will all judge you, but we're judging you together. It will be great. Um, so let's do this together. Let's go back here. So what about back here? What, what's your, like, embarrassing song? Somebody just shout it out. What, what would be yours back here? Oh, they're like, who's going to do it? What is it? We, <laughs> just, just Britney. Hashtag free Britney. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? I love that half of you are like, what's wrong with Britney? I don't know. Anything Britney Spears. <laughs> Maybe not anything. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's great. Britney Spears. What else? Somebody over here. Anybody else? What else we got? We got Britney Spears and J Justin Bieber. Did somebody just say your body is a wonderland? And was that my mother? It was my mother. Everybody say, hey, LaVon Holden. <laughs> I also should acknowledge that my mom bought me the John Mayer CD and took your body as a wonderland off of it um, <clears throat> when I was 12. Still in counseling over that. Also, Justin Bieber. I think Justin Bieber's a great one. Do we have any Bieber fans? <laughs> <laughs> the four of you. <laughs> Uh, that's great. That's great. Baby, baby, baby. That's great. All right, what about here? Uh, what about songs? Any other songs in here? What do we got? Oh, come now. I know y'all got some good ones. Everybody's like, well, what was it? Meatloaf. Do we have any Meatloaf fans in the room? <laughs> yeah, you do. 
I love some meatloaf. That's a good one. And the food. It's good. Anybody else? What, somebody else over here. What else we got? What other embarrassing songs do we got over here? Oh, come, come on. Just poke them. There, you, you, Hank Williams Jr. You got any Hank Williams Jr. fans in the room? That's not embarrassing. That's just like, I'm a man. You know what I mean? Like, that's so good. What about back here? What about back here? What embarrassing songs do you guys have? <laughs> in case you didn't hear, what makes you beautiful by One Direction? Ladies over 40, how many of you have had a crush on somebody from One Direction? Be honest. <laughs> She's like, yes, both hands. That's amazing. That's amazing. Harry Styles, was he One Direction? That's embarrassing. Fellas, I also watch Braveheart. It's great. Um, what about back here? Anybody else? What's another embarrassing song? Do we have another embarrassing one? <laughs> so here's what I'm going to say. Somebody woke up this morning and they go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to church. And they did not expect that someone would shout out in the crowd, holler back girl by Gwen Stefani and Chris Tomlin. That's amazing. Some of y'all get that later. That's great. All right, so here's what's fun. Like, you get this. Now, the other thing I want to say, too, you, you've been listening to this, like, you know, Rickroll song. Can we just talk one more thing real quick? How does that voice come out of this little boy? You know what I mean? Has anybody else ever thought, like, how does that, how does that even happen, right? Now, here's what's so funny. Like, you get this. Like, there's, there's moments where you've sort of, like, embarrassed yourself singing. Anybody pull up to a stoplight before and you were just rocking out to some Shania Twain? <laughs> I love that you're still raising your hands. Like, you don't have to now. It's fine. Yeah. But you were just like, you were just doing your thing. And all of a sudden, you know, Billy Ray Cyrus comes on. And you're like, it's my moment. You know, like, <laughs> like you get it. Like, there's a little bit of you that has experienced, like, the embarrassment over some of these things. Now, what's also interesting, and you know this about you, and this is true about me too. There are certain parts of our lives where we kind of, like, hold it a little bit closer than other things. Like the music that you listen to when you're all by yourself. Uh, the guilty pleasure reality shows that we talked about a few weeks ago. Someone also yelled out naked and afraid a few weeks ago. Is that person still here? Is that person here? Nope. They're like, I'm never going back. <laughs> they're like, nope, never did it. Yeah, so like there's these parts of our lives that we sort of kind of hold, you know, a little bit closer and hold together. Now, what I want to talk about for the next few minutes is, is really this idea about like how do we how do we sort of like hold things tightly that we maybe not are ashamed of, but we kind of hold them tightly. And then there's the other part of us, and you've probably experienced this too, that it's not even that we're ashamed of certain parts of our lives, but there's a part of us that sort of doubts whether other people will get it or they will experience it correctly or think of us correctly, right? Anybody, anybody ever experienced that, right? Like there's a part of you that's really proud of certain parts of you. And then there's a part of you that's really not proud of other parts of you, right? Now, I'm going to be really honest. You were really honest with me with Britney Spears and other things. So I'm going to be honest with you. Like, there's parts of us that, like, have you ever looked in the mirror and your husband tells you you're beautiful all the time and you believe him a third of the time, you know? And then there's one thing that you just look at, you're like, oh, I just feel a little bit like I wish I could just change that part, right? Or if somebody didn't see that sort of thing, you know, it would kind of be okay. Now, what's also interesting for most of us is we have these kind of specific areas of our life that's not, again, ashamed of, but we just kind of hold tightly. But for a lot of people, especially in 2021, one of the things that a lot of people hold tightly about themselves is where they are when it comes to faith, right? Like, you probably don't walk into the office and just announce what you think about God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, or Buddha, right? Like, you probably don't. Like, you're probably not sitting around eating a couple M&Ms with peanut butter because that's the only kind of M&Ms you should eat. And have a conversation with somebody about, like, where you are when it comes to, like, the deeper parts of your faith. And then the other part about it, this is if you grew up like I did, right, there are churches that you might attend or there are places that you might go where it just doesn't, it just doesn't even feel safe to talk about some of those things, right? Or some of the questions that you have about God or faith or your doubt or your internal struggle. It's like, I don't know that I could ask that. I don't know if I could ask that here. And so what you do, like you do with Delirious Iris, is you sort of just kind of keep it a little bit closer to the chest. Now, when I was in college, my freshman year of college, I was sitting uh, in a chapel because I went to a Christian school and we had to go to chapel three times a week or get somebody to scan your card, but we'll talk about that another time. And <clears throat> I'm a Christian, right? It's fine. So I showed up to this chapel and this lady walks up and her name was Dr. Carolyn 
Dirksen, and she walks up to this podium, and she's not flashy. She doesn't have one of these things. You know, she just gets up there with a podium, and she reads this just beautiful, messy sort of narrative in the scripture about a father who has a son who has epilepsy. And Jesus is like the height of his ministry, and he's doing all these amazing things. All these people are coming up to see him, both teach, but also see the miracle worker, worker do, like, miracle-working things, you know. And you get this moment where the dad is, is really kind of going to Jesus on behalf of his son with these epileptic seizures. And he says this thing to Jesus where he kind of goes and he's like, I want you to heal him. And he almost approaches Jesus with an enormous amount of doubt. Like, I think you can, I hope you can, I wish that you can. I'm just kind of like, please can you, Jesus? And Jesus' response is like, what do you mean, if I can, right? And then you get this uh, account, which I think is so powerful and so beautiful. It says this, the man responds with some of the most powerful words, I think, in the entire scripture. He says, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Which is one of the most, like, real and raw and honest sort of moments. Like, you're sitting in front of this person who's obviously done miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And you believe, but at the same time, you're human. Because supernatural things don't always happen. And you're kind of looking going, I don't know what I think about you. I don't know what I think. But would you just help my unbelief? Then in the midst of his doubts and struggle and question and the things that a lot of times people kind of keep tight to the chest. He looks at Jesus in the most real sort of way and says, I don't know what I think, but would you help me think the way that you would have me to think? Now, if you grew up around church or if you grew up in church or if you grew up around sort of the entity that is Christianity, many of us were taught this. Many of us were taught that eliminating doubt was actually the foundation of our faith. I grew up in this church one time, and the speaker comes up to me. I was kind of standing in the back, probably like some of you do, like right now while I'm speaking, which I'm totally cool with. And you're kind of just like this. You're like, I'm not sure what I think about you yet. I'm just standing in the back, like slightly judging, but not really sure what I think. And this, the preacher walks up to me, <laughs> and they said, don't worry, son. All of your questions will be answered. And I'll never forget at 21 year, years old going, I really hope not. Because if I had an answer to everything, number one, I would be God and I would drive a Tesla. You know what I mean? <laughs> All of your questions will be answered. But, but think about this. Is that even a God that you're interested in serving? That if all your questions were answered and all your doubt was fully and finally satisfied and all the mystery and beauty was taken away, is that actually what you would want to lean into anyway? Now, here's how I know that you wouldn't, right? This is a picture of my family. I love my family. We took this last night. Uh, yeah, so that's Emily. If you're wondering, how did he pull that off? Me too. Um, <clears throat> we have three kids because, hey. <laughs> anyway, so that's Henry. She's in the back right now going, oh, my gosh. Yeah, anyway, so Henry is five. That's Eleanor. That's three. And then that's Oliver Bennett. Uh, who's somewhere in the, the range of four to eight weeks. We've lost count because of lack of sleep. And I'll tell you this. Here's how I know that complexity is something that you need in a relationship. Because, fellas, I want you, you need to agree with me here. I have two women in our household, and I don't understand either one of them at any point in time. They're They're clapping. <laughs> His wife just slapped him. I love it. No, I'm just kidding. Like, you get it, right? And, and it's beautiful. And I shouldn't, right? Can you imagine going up to your wife or your significant other and goes, you know what? I just wanted to tell you, I finally understand everything there is to know about you. I also love our couch, you know? Why? Because complexity and mystery and beauty is a part of it, isn't it? Even in your friendships, even in your parents, even in every relationship that matters to you, there's some sort of like powerful complexity and mystery and growth and moving forward and not being stagnant and deeper levels of understanding. So if you take that concept and you fast forward it all the way to, you know, like God, who is infinite, why would we ever think that the mystery would be eradicated? Put in my notes like this, I said it this way. When a finite being works to discover an infinite being, 
there isn't complete understanding. And some of you, for the very first time, you hear somebody look at you and go, and that's okay. In the same way, it's okay that you don't understand everything about your teenage son and why he smells like Old Spice every day. There's a part of you that embraces the beauty and the mystery because genuine faith knows how to embrace tension. The more interesting question, the powerful question, the thing that we lean into isn't whether or not we have doubts and questions and whether we struggle through faith or we kind of navigate that. The question is what direction you're moving, right? So let me put this up, up here. The direction of our faith is always either moving one of two directions, either towards God or away from God. You're either moving towards the direction of a deeper understanding and you're leaning in and you're engaging with it and you're moving towards God, even dragging all of your questions with you, or you're moving away from God by choosing to be like, I just, I don't, I'm not going to engage anymore, right? One of my biggest things about people who would identify as agnostic is almost like there's a, there's a slight apathy towards fully engaging and, and the, the idea that God might be personal to you. And what would it look like if we said, you know what, I'm just, I'm just not going to move in that direction. I'm going to move towards what it might look like with all of my questions and struggle and church hurts and being angry and whatever and being a part of these deeper sort of questions that are leading me to something more. What if I brought all of that in the direction towards God rather than away from him? And so the real thing that we're kind of wrestling through is this. How should we steward our doubt or how we steward our doubt will ultimately shape the faith direction that we have. So I'm going to read you one of the most famous narratives in all of the scripture. And if you've been around church for a while, you've probably heard this. If you're not, you're in for a real treat. And if you're a person who doesn't know what they think about supernatural things, I totally get it. You can read this as literal like I do. Or you can look at this and see what's actually happening and the beauty of it. And right now, at least, either one of those I think is okay. So this is Matthew's account. What happens is there's this massive storm sort of brewing. Anybody ever been on a boat in the middle of a storm? Anybody? Anybody? Right. Anybody ever been scared out of their ever-loving mind in a storm? Yeah, on a boat. Yeah. You get it. And so these disciples or close followers of Jesus, they're on this boat. Jesus has been teaching. He's kind of got a way to pray. He's going to meet them. And so what happens is these disciples are on the boat, and Jesus is kind of resting somewhere else. He's far off. And they're out, kind of out on the sea together. And there's a guy named Matthew who writes down what happens in these moments. So here's Matthew's account of what happens. So shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to this group of disciples and he started walking on the lake. Pause. What? He starts walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake in the middle of this storm, they're terrified. And they say, it must be a ghost. And they cried out in fear. Now, you don't believe in ghosts except for Casper sometimes, right? (laughs) But there's a little bit of you that probably believes in supernatural things sometime, right? Now, during this time period, seeing things out on the water, seeing mist out on the water, the idea that there might be some sort of supernatural spirit out there wasn't out of the realm of possibility. A lot of people thought like that. And so it wasn't kind of this like, oh, it's a ghost. We've never seen it before. It was kind of like an assumption that if something's walking on water, it's better than you, right? And so they see this entity coming towards them. They assume that it's a ghost. And then Jesus immediately says to them, and I love this, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid, which if you get this, don't be afraid means nothing when you're afraid, right? How many of you have been on a roller coaster and felt a little bit afraid? Anybody? How many of you have been on a first date and felt a lot of bit afraid? Anybody? How many of you are on a first date? No, I'm just kidding, right, <laughs> right now. That would be great. Looking at somebody and saying, don't be afraid is kind of a weird thing. Like my five-year-old son, Henry, I looked at him the other day and there was a bee around. I'm like, don't be afraid. And he just looked at me like I was stupid. <laughs> going, that thing has a stinger, you don't, he wins, you know. As much as I say don't be afraid, it's just kind of a phrase. And Jesus looks at it and says, don't be afraid, as if to think that that was just going to change their minds. And I think Jesus probably knew that it wasn't. And what Peter does, one of Jesus' closest kind of disciples, and he's a little bit like your friend who's a little bit overzealous, he immediately says this. He says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Which is kind of one of these things going like, hey, if you're really a miracle worker, tell me to come out. Now, here's how I envision this, right? Have you ever had that overzealous friend who speaks up before they thought about what they were going to say? 
Anybody? Come on. Anybody? How many of you are that friend? Be honest, right? Yeah. All right. You get this. Like, the friend that speaks up before they think through everything they're saying. Any, do we have any new girl fans in the room? Do we have any new girl fans? We love Nick. Let me show you this. It's a little bit like this moment right here. Some of you are like, that That feels too real. <laughs> you ever had one of those moments where you just like put your foot in your mouth immediately? That's how I imagine this. All the disciples kind of standing around Peter. Peter's like, call me out on the water with you. And everybody's like, really? You know? And I love what Jesus says next. There's not a lot of words around it. It's not this like pretty poetic sort of thing. Jesus simply says, come. As if Jesus believed that Peter had the capacity to look at the storm around him, to embrace the fullness of his own doubts and questions about, you know, walking on water, and get out of the boat and take a step towards Jesus. Then Peter gets out of the boat, and then he walks on the water and he came towards Jesus. Which in, in this moment for me, I think is so powerful. Because he left everybody else who was like uber skeptical of the moment behind. And he brought the fullness of his doubts and his questions and the messiness of this moment. And he was pursuing something. And what he was pursuing was this. I think Peter was drawn to the mysterious and the longing that he had. But ultimately the person of Jesus, because there's something compelling and inviting about the person of Jesus. You may be here and not believe that Jesus rose from the grave, but be fully, fully compelled to believe in, in the kingdom that Jesus taught about. Why? Because there's something beautiful and powerful in him. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you a word that I'm likely going to botch, but we're going to try this together. And so when you go to lunch today, wherever you go to lunch, you at least get to say this to your waiter and look at their face and you will enjoy it. There's a word for this sort of mysterious, longing kind of pursuit of this sort of thing. It's a German word, and we're going to say this together. It's Grins Big Rifflage. So we're going to likely accidentally swear together, okay? All right, so on the count of three, what I want to do is I want us all just to kind of say this out loud, I want you to just kind of get the feeling of this because it feels real weird to say. So on the count of three, we're going to say Grins Big Rifflage. Ready? One, two, three. Grins. Felt good, didn't it? That's fun. Uh, let's try it one more time, but with some oomph. You ready? One, two, three. Uh, now, ladies, I just need you to show up all the men in the room on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Sorry. No. All right, fellas, one more time. Fellas, real quick. One, two, three. See, it sounds good. It feels like it's a Braveheart movie, right? Like there's a little bit of that. And what this word means is really powerful. Let's put, let's put this up here. It means beyond analysis or description. That there are moments, there are things, there are, there are experiences, there is life that you have that you just don't have words for. And at the core of it and the essence of it is something that's pulling you into something more in your everyday life. It's pulling you into something more beautiful and powerful. It's pulling you in with all of your doubts and questions and struggle. It's pulling you in to all of that. Now, some of you know that I grew up in, or not I didn't grow up, but we just moved uh, about a year ago from Traverse City, Michigan. Do we have any Michigan fans in the room? Get out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, let me show you this. I want, I want to show you this. This is like Grin's big riffledge for me. Let's go to this next one if we can. So I want you to just kind of picture this. Anybody like been outside near water at night and you can see like all the stars? You ever had this moment? And you find yourself like taking breaths slower, you know? And you find yourself thinking about things differently. 
and all of a sudden doing your taxes matter a little bit less in that moment and all the paperwork that's waiting on you at your desk matters a little bit less and the fight that you had with your spouse matters a little bit less and there's something happening inside of you that actually feels like it grips you and it pulls you forward into your existence. I'm curious for you, just for a minute, here's what I'd love for you to do, just for a second. I'd love for you to close your eyes just for a second. And I want you to think about what that is for you and the last time that you experienced that. When was the last time that a moment in your life gripped you so heavily that you were reminded that the tangible environment you were in wasn't all that there is? And the bigger question around that is then what is it? And for those of us in the room who have just done a fantastic job of pretending not to care anymore, is it that you might have found yourself at some point or another being apathetic because you were afraid that you couldn't quite explain that thing? When was the last time you experienced, and we'll bring this back up and you can open your eyes, grins big richly. <laughs> I think Peter experienced it here. When he's walking on water, eyes fixed on Jesus, moving in the direction of Jesus. And then what happens next is this, like, really messy, beautiful, power, powerful, like, kind of the essence of what the gospel is. It says that when, when Peter saw the wind, he found himself afraid, even though Jesus told him not to be. And then he began to sink. And in the midst of doubt that led him to look at the storm around him, the first place that he then calls out to is Jesus. Lord, save me. And what happens next is the picture of God that I think we get throughout the entire New Testament. It's the thing that I think compels so many people to lean in to faith, specifically in Jesus. We don't know how much time passed between Peter yelling out, save me, and the moment that this happens. Except for Matthew includes this word, immediately. Jesus reaches out his hand, caught him. He says, you have little faith, why did you doubt? Now, I, I grew up sometimes, and the way that this passage was talked about was like that math teacher who didn't like you and did this. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you of little faith, as if it was speaking to the identity of Peter. You of little faith, why did you doubt? And I just don't think that's consistent with the way that Jesus talks throughout the rest of the New Testament. My son, recently, uh, <laughs> I told him not to swing the bat in the house. <laughs> Which means swing the bat in the house, right? And then broke something, right? To which he then <laughs> comes to me, and I love this. And, and, I, and I looked at him kind of brokenhearted, you know? And I was like, oh, no, man. That's why I told you not to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not mad. I'm not even upset. Okay, I'm a little bit mad because it was my, but outside of that PlayStation, I'm just kidding. It wasn't a PlayStation. <laughs> it was a base. Uh, anyway. But outside of that, uh, my response to him was, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, why'd you do that? I don't think Jesus is looking at Peter going, and you. I think Jesus is looking at Peter brokenhearted and saying, you had the beauty of this experience that all of those other guys in the boat weren't getting. And when you begin to sink, we don't know exactly what it was like, but he just shows up, arm in the water, pulls him out. And I think brokenhearted, Looks at Peter. Oh no. Why? Why did you doubt? He goes on. He says, immediately reached out. You have little faith. Go to the next slide. Thanks, man. I think this is kind of the crux of the story, and I think this is really what we're about as a church, and that's this. That Jesus meets us in our doubts and our questions and our humanity. I don't think you have to stop being human or a smart person to go to church. I don't think you have to check your intelligence at the door, and I don't think that you have to stop questioning things. 
I don't think you have to pretend that sometimes the Bible doesn't make sense to you or someone you love passed away and you don't have words for that. But you know that that kind of grins big riffledge is a pain that isn't fully and finally satisfied by anything else. You just live with it. I don't think you have to stop any of those things to lean into Jesus because I think Jesus meets us at every single one of those steps in our journey. I put it in my notes, I said this, that faith is not the elimination of doubt. I don't think that's what faith is. I think doubt can actually be the illumination that your faith is active. Because if you're actively struggling through your questions and your doubt, you ready? It means you're actively engaged with your questions and your doubt. And if the God of the universe is who he said that he is, and if the posture of Jesus is one where he shows up and he meets you in the water immediately, then he's not afraid of your biggest questions. And he's not afraid of the experiences that you don't even talk about. And he's not afraid of you laying in bed at night and wondering. The deeper question for every single person in this room is really this. Is the direction of your faith leading you towards God or away from God? Which means are you apathetic or are you actively leaning in? And what I would love for you to do if you're leaning away is to answer this question with authenticity. Don't lie about it. Don't lie to yourself about it. You don't have to lie to me about it. Don't lie to yourself. The question is this. What actually caused you to move in the direction away from God? What actually caused it? Did you feel foolish at one point? Did you feel like you outsmarted your faith at one point? Did an experience happen at one point? The question is, what caused you to move in that direction? And then the, the other question that I really want you to answer is, like, really, what was the thing? Not the thing you tell everybody else, but what was the real thing that caused you to do that? And I want you to lean in. And the church that we're building here is a church where we lean into all of those questions and doubts. And we're not afraid of that sort of thing. And that we, we come here around the table together and we believe that in the midst of us moving in directions and being honest about where we are and bringing the fullness of our humanity, that we can actually experience Jesus in a more beautiful way. That you don't have to be afraid of your brokenness or your suffering or your pain. And you don't have to be afraid of going, I just don't see it that way because I read books, you know. Like you don't have to be afraid of any of that. You can come to the table with the fullness of all of that and go, I don't know what I think. But I want to move in the direction of the God of the universe, whatever that means. And I want to experience more of that thing that is that grins, big riffledge. And I want to bring the fullness of that to a relationship with God, whatever that is. And I believe so deeply that Jesus wants that version of you and that he's going to meet you in that space. So what I hope you kind of like walk away with and sort of grasp kind of like the last sort of slide that I want to give you, is that following Jesus isn't this mystery that you solve one day. You can go to the last one. Following Jesus isn't this uh, mystery that we solve. You can go to that last slide, thanks. It's, it's ultimately like this relationship that you embrace. Not that you have all the answers for, not that you figured everything out with, but a relationship that you deeply and truly embrace. And that you bring the fullness of yourself to. Now, I want you to see a picture of this, right? And the way that we're going to do this is uh, we've been going, I think, I think it's only like 14-ish months. And we met this amazing couple through LinkedIn because, again, we didn't have friends in Columbus. So we added people randomly. And, uh, and we added them as a friend on Facebook or on LinkedIn. And then all of a sudden they started coming and they started being a part of this community. And I love this. Most recently, they were the first people that we baptized. As you hear in their story for the next few minutes, you're going to get this glimpse of the doubt and question and struggle. And here's what I want you to do as you're listening. I want you to be like an active listener for the next few minutes. As you hear their story, what I want you to think about and ask yourself is where are the parallels of their story to my story? What does that mean? Let's watch this video together.
Hi, I'm Mike Morton. And I'm Christina. And we are from Dublin, Ohio, and we have two kids. Uh, a son, Michael, is 26. And Mackenzie is 25 this month. I came from a very religious family. We had a tragedy in our family, and um, rather than the church coming around and putting their arms in, in being there for us, we were kind of, you know, basically we were shunned. That, that took a long time to overcome. At times throughout my life, I kept coming back and, and trying, and I just, I never felt welcomed. Part of it was probably my own issues, but um, I just never felt a connection with anything or any one when it came to religion or faith. And I, and I, similarly, I mean, I, I had a, an upbringing too in traditional church, and and our family was was pretty involved up until I was about the age eighteen, and um, you know we had some some family tragedies as well, and I think that there was a period of indifference of a thirty plus years, I would guess, right, for both of us, and I think it just became more convenient not to confront spirituality uh, or or Christ even, so we were comfortable and I think there's a lot of people in our position and I know in our arch, our age group even friends we have that that comfort is um, sometimes you're, you're afraid to take that stuff and I feel that's where we were yeah I it was always there I was always curious and I was always searching for an answer and um, so I started looking at various religions and in my mind I'm thinking you know what do all these religions have in common, common? And maybe that's where the truth lies, you know. At that point, Mike had already started reading the Bible, yeah. and it, it kind of hit me that, you know, it's one thing I haven't done was read the Bible. Maybe we so, should start there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So really the moment that that hit us, and I think it was really kind of a progression or journey, but it was funny. It was during the national championship game this past year that uh, Marilyn – Priest and I struck, struck up a conversation about religion, and so we connected and decided that uh, we would try to do a, a Bible study. <laughs> we, had, in fact, even Googled how to do Bible study, which is now we laugh about it. But uh, it, we have a lot of fun. It's, I mean, <laughs> we have a lot of fun. It was at that point for me, and, and certainly I'm not sure how you feel on that exactly, but um, when I really came to know, you know, who Jesus is, and um, that's that's when I knew that. I want to take that step, walk, walk his path. I don't know. It's amazing once you start really taking the journey and really listening, reading and listening to the words that it, it's very impactful. It opens um, your eyes to the world around you, I think. Yeah. It has to me. I used to think that if you had questions, that just meant that you weren't, you didn't believe and you didn't, it just made you a bad person. That was a lot. Faith. Yeah, it yeah. was. A lot of I think a lot of that comes from how I grow up, and mm -hmm. um, you didn't question, and you just fell in line. Yes, <laughs> yeah. But now that concept has completely changed for me. Having questions is perfectly fine. It's perfectly normal and human. It um, it doesn't mean you doubt your faith. It just means you're a curious person. And I think it's what made us comfortable, right, with new roads. Yes. The fact that it, it is there's such a diverse group of, of folks here, right, and backgrounds, and that's wonderful, really, for people who are, are new to do the church again you know, after 30 some years. And, um, so being able to explore that and and to, um, and, and to serve in, in that community is 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 a huge a huge value to us, as, particularly yeah. as new Christians. Yeah. Well, I know we have a lot of people we want to thank, um, but just to name a few. Most importantly, John and Marilyn Fries. I mean, they've walked this walk with us, yep. and they're our small group, and, yeah. and and probably our closest spiritual friends, right? Absolutely. You know? And I'm thankful for uh, my close friend, my best friend of 45 plus years, Mike Zara. Uh, he planted seeds for me many years ago, and, and and also to my college roommate, who's a pastor, Chris Lyons, out in Seattle. Um, just just a wonderful human being as well, and uh, I'm very grateful for their friendship for, for all these years, and. And certainly, uh, I do want to thank uh, uh, Patrick and Emily, and Ryan and Emily, and the whole family at Nuvo. Um, you know, it, it feels like we've got a new family. Yeah, well, absolutely. 
now that we've come this far on our journey, um, and and although we've already, we both have already received Jesus Christ as our Savior, um, we want to be baptized. That's right. Um, yeah, and, and publicly share with our with our friends and our new family um, that we uh, we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Story. Can we go to for Mike and Christina for sharing their story with us? So powerful. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Here's what I'm going to tell you, and we're going to wrap up our time together at the end. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If you're here, you're a person who's going, you know what, I'm, I might be around sort of the faith thing, but I'm disconnected. Or if you're a person who's going, you know what, I'm not sure what I think about the whole Christianity thing. But I'm going to ask you to do, even if it's just for the next four, five, six, seven days, or between now and the next time we meet, what I would love for you to do is to challenge yourself to be the person who leans in to your questions and your doubts about faith. The kind of person who goes, you know what, I'm not sure what I think about all of it, but I at least want to lean in to the parts that I feel like I need to wrestle down. And what I hope for you, what I hope for me, what I hope for everybody in this room, is that as we leave this place, as we kind of go out and we kind of live our everyday, slightly mundane and moments or parts of our life, that we bring the fullness of who we are and our experiences. And we come to that, to God, and we say, God, here's, here's all of it. Open-handedly, God, here's every bit of me. Now, if you're up there, because I love praying this prayer, if you're up there, God, I want, I want you to tangibly show me that you're here. And some of you, over the next week, you need to write down what those questions are because you haven't asked them in a long time. And some of you, you're a person who, you might be a follower of Jesus, you've been a follower of Jesus for a long time, but you stuffed this box of questions that you've had for a long time over here, and you haven't leaned in, and you haven't engaged, which also means you probably haven't grown in a long time either. And what I'd love for you to do in the course of the next week is just to open that box and go, what, what are these things I've sort of left behind because I didn't feel like I could lean into it anymore? And my hope is that we are the kind of church where you can come come with the fullness of all of those things in a safe place and deeply explore your faith and explore who Jesus is and that he would meet us in the midst of all that. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'd love for you, if you would, to go ahead and stand up. I'm, I'm going to pray for us, and here's how we're going to end our time together. <clears throat> Dana, Fatima, Justice are going to lead us in a song, and if you're here and you're a follower of Jesus, I'm going to ask you to sing this out with everything that you have. And not just as a song, but as a prayer. And just so we're all on the same page, where are all my bad singers at, just to be clear? Where are all the bad singers in the room? You're bad. We know you're bad. Everybody around you is going to know you're bad. But we're all going to be bad together, okay? And I want you to sing this out as a prayer. And then for some of you who are like, I'm not sure where I'm at when it comes to the camp of like faith and all this sort of stuff. Some of you, you're going to sing this and some of you are just going to look at the words. But I think this is one of the best pictures of who Jesus is and what we believe that Jesus wants for you. And so it's okay if you just want to look at the words for the next few minutes. But what I hope for you is that as you do, you get a picture of what it might look like for you to experience not just the idea of Jesus, but the person of Jesus and what he did on your behalf. And the group that I'm probably the most interested in is the group that goes, I just haven't engaged with it in a long time. And you're in a church for the first time where you don't really know a lot of people. You don't remember the last time that you sang anything like this out, whatever's up there. And what I'm going to pray for you is that as you do that thing, 
as you lean into something that might even just feel nostalgic to you in terms of what you grew up with, I'm going to pray that in the most tangible way possible, you don't just feel the presence of God, but that you begin to understand his presence even more. Pray for us. Father, we thank you that none of our doubts or questions or struggles are scary. God, we thank you that you meet us in every bit of it and you lean in fully with us. Father, I pray for the person in the room who's had these questions for a long time and not really sure what to do with it. Father, I ask that over these next few minutes that I ask that you would speak so clearly to them in the most tangible way possible. I pray for the person in the room who's been a follower of you for a long time, but they have this box of things that they left around, left behind like years ago and they haven't dealt with or engaged with. God, I pray that they would have the courage to reopen that box. And I pray for the person in the room who all this just feels slightly nostalgic to them and they like it enough and the band's good enough and the service is good enough. God, I pray that over the next few minutes that you would just, you would actually make it feel like something inside of them God, we ask that your presence be so tangible to us the next few minutes. Today we pray.
much for being a part of our first day of the church, kind of day one. We're super excited that you're a part of it. And to celebrate, we splurged. We bought all of you popsicles. Um, so I'm so excited about that. If you would, we'd love to meet you and kind of hang out out there for a few minutes. Uh, I want to let you know, too, if you if you have those Connect cards, we would, we would love to get those from you as well. We're going to have boxes right outside here, or you can leave them on your seat, either one. But we would love to stay connected with you. Um, and then the other thing I was going to tell you about, if you have questions about our church, we have this event called New to Nuvo. It's going to be coming up soon. We'd love to give you some more information about that. And the last thing I'm super excited to tell you about is next week we'll be right back here for the first time. We're going to have two Sundays in a row, which we're pretty excited about. So now we're like a real church or something. Um, so uh, we'd love you to come back. And to celebrate that, we actually like one-upped it. So it's not popsicles. We have street tacos next week, people. So get you some. It'll be great. So that's weird to say out loud. Uh, anyway, so I'd love for you to join us. Uh, it's going to be Dos Hermanos. will be right here uh, next week. We'd love for you to be there. They'll be available for you to for purchase right after the service. And we'd love for you to join us. Uh, make sure you join us next week for that. Thank you so much for being a part of our grand opening. We'll see you right out there on the patio. We'll see you soon.